Welcome to The Fix. Sit down with copywriting experts Nick O'Connor and Glenn Fisher as they review, discuss and improve real-world copy sent in by you. This is The Fix. Hello, it's Glenn here, um, by myself today in the office. Um, we'll be joined by Nick in a moment, don't worry. Um, but this is a special episode uh, of The Fix. Um, where not only we got Nick with us, we have also got Giles Lingwood and Andrew Bolton. Now, this uh, we basically give the context. Um, it was December of last year, um, 2022, so it's 2023 now, January. Uh, I'm recording this. Uh, we went to the University of Lincoln. Um, as you know, we're getting about the country, we're going to all different places, interviewing all different experts for our Fix Accelerator Network Group. And we met up with some Fix Accelerate members in Lincoln, and we also met up with Andrew and Giles. Now, Andrew and Giles both, uh, as well as being authors, both um, authored very good copywriting books, uh, Copywriting Is uh, by Andrew Bolton and uh, Read Me, and more recently, uh, Copywriting, uh, a re uh, kind of edit, uh, an update of Mark Shaw's famous book uh, by Giles. Um, as well as being authors, they also teach their lecturers um, on the creative advertising course at Lincoln Uni, um, which was fascinating to talk to both of them. We, we filmed two um, hour long episodes, one with Andrew and one with Giles. If you want to see them, uh, that, that's for uh, Fix Accelerator members. Um, I'll put a link uh, below this video or you can find it. You can comment or wherever you're seeing this. Uh, and I can share a link with you. Uh, but they're fascinating videos. But what we did, we got both of them um, at the end of those sessions. Uh, we sat down and we spoke to them about getting feedback about your copy. That's partly, mainly what we do at The Fix here is uh, review your copy. And we wanted to get um, Andrew and Giles' thoughts on how you actually uh, go about doing that with a group of uh, creative writing, creative advertising students. Um, so. That's the episode. We're going to jump there uh, in a moment. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you want to see, and I do recommend you um, watch them because they're fascinating interviews, full hour with Andrew and full hour with Giles, um, join the Fix Accelerator. Uh, it's £10 a month. Uh, there's a link, as I say, somewhere around here. As well as Giles and Andrew, we've got a whole host of other fantastic uh, guests, including John Ford, Vicky Ross, Annabelle Ford, uh, Kim Krause Schwarm, um, who else have we had? Andrew Natton, uh, Dave Harland, uh, Sophie Cross, Giles Edwards, um, James Cross uh, from Meanwhile. Um, we've had so many Jess um, McIntyre and Natalie Moore, Steve Price. We've had got loads of videos there, they're all in the Patreon. If you join £10 a month, you get access to it and you get access to all of them. We've got new ones coming out all the time. Uh, we are in London again soon, um, so hope to see you there. Loads of stuff, just get involved. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this episode of Fix. I'll see you soon. I'm just going to dive straight in, okay? To what? To the... Oh, right, yeah, that's fine. Right, guys, we spent most of our time together today talking about how you train people to think differently, be creative, all of those sorts of things. But uh, it strikes me that one of the biggest um, pain points that new copywriters and working copywriters and other people in the industry have is getting good, useful feedback. Okay, so lots of people, it's a very solitary profession if they're freelancing or you know, sort of jobbing or getting started. The only feedback they might get is from the client themselves, yeah. and, 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 and clients aren't necessarily the best people to give creative feedback on the work. That's why they're employing the copywriter to begin with. They can give useful feedback, but not necessarily feedback that might move your career forward. So when you're approaching that challenge with your students, how do you structure your copy reviews? Is there anything that you, any rules you, 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 you place on them, any do's and don'ts? You know, How do you get them to review each other's work? Because that's a really, really crucial skill. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's something we may have chatted about off camera earlier this morning, and this instinct that you will have as a, not even just a young creative, but a young person, when you're asked to comment on your, your friend or your peers' thing that they have done and created, that our, our kind of social nicety is coming into play, and you don't want to offend them, you don't want to upset them, which I suppose is a, is a positive thing that you have that kind of empathy in there. 
Yeah. Um, but you end up saying, I like it, it's nice, or it's good, and you don't give anything sort of valuable away. There's certainly no attempt to offer a critique. You're basically giving very, very polite or very, very useless praise. Is that fair, yeah. I think? Yeah. And that's something we sort of see, not just at the beginning of the first year, this is probably the thing that's hardest to crack over those three years, even now, mm -hmm. in the third years, when you have sessions, you sometimes have to drag that critique out. So I think there's that day trot thing that says, you know, uh, the word like is irrelevant, it's, it's a bad and useless word in this scenario. You are no longer um, students or, or even sort of, you know, people first, you are advertising professionals. So what you like is a complete irrelevance, it's about is it effective? And we are training them to, to kind of look at it in this different way, where it's not at all about my personal feelings, it's even about my personal creative feelings. It's about I have got an intimate knowledge of brief in the same way that you have. So I'm going to critique it based on my understanding of what that brief has asked us to do. I guess this comes from, it's, it's, not, it's not really useful to them, but it's kind of, it's, it's useful to understand that most people, they think they're going to get retaliated against if I say anything but positive feedback, yeah, yeah. then that student's going to, when I put my thing forward, they're going to go, well, yeah. I'm going to come back, even if it's, even if it is good, they're going to say something bad, but what I assume, like, do you have to work on creating that environment of safety, where it's like, look, this is what, you, you're allowed to, we're not, yeah. it's not personal, we're looking at the work, how, how do you kind of, how, how do you go about creating that work? So, um, just, just to build on that very quickly, I think many, many years ago in, in the Creative Advertising Studio here uh, at Lincoln, we had a big sign that said, seek criticism, not praise. And I think that's, that's a really nice mindset for our students to have that, again, through their education, through their education before coming to university, it was, can you tell me how good it is, please? Yeah. Um, whereas if you reframe that question or, we, or, or ask a different question of, how can I make this better? then actually you can work on a, a, a positive quality building exercise rather than just let just tell me if you like it or not. I think for, for me I've, I've, got, I've got two techniques that I use to try and draw out feedback I think or, or, or draw out useful feedback. I think the first thing I always do is I try not to let students read copy I, I, I would rather they speak it out loud. Because I think reading copy is, a, again, quite a solitary experience. Um, it requires a particular mindset and, a, and a, an attention, uh, a, a particular sort of a, a way of, of, of being in your own mind when you're reading. I think if you can read it out loud, more often than not, that can help you criticise your own work. You know, so that, that age-old technique of read your own work out loud is often useful when working with students to read their, so they read their work to their peers. That, that's a, a, a great self-learning process as well as, and also it's much easier to listen to somebody's copy rather than having to read somebody's copy. And then, I think, um, and you'll know of this technique that we've, we've used a number of times, which is, is, is actually be more specific in what you're asking. When you're, when you're asking for feedback, don't say, so what do you think of it? Mm -hmm. You have to almost break down feedback or criticism into little subsets. So, does it communicate? Do you find it interesting? Have you heard anything like it before? So don't just have to say, what do you think? Be more specific. Mm. Um, and if you can say, did that capture your attention? Is a much more useful question of, what do you think? Or, does it um, do you know what it's, you know, is it communicating what you think it's communicating? Or, or what are they saying to you? So it, it's not to say, I want to read you something, can you give me some feedback? That's, that's a, a vanilla question, it's not going to get any useful feedback. The most useful thing to ask is a specific question in which to consider the copy. I think being specific, well actually I'll tell you what our uh, process was for us, just briefly because it might be useful to people watching, but we had a, I guess the process worked like this, uh, the copy would be read aloud by the writer, that is the only thing they were allowed to say in the whole review, couldn't yes. talk after that. Can't, can't butt in and say, yeah. oh, 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 I thought <laughs> this. Because there's nothing more annoying than a copywriter that wants to explain your own work. Because you already had that chance <laughs> in the work, so that's the only chance you get. Uh, so it's read aloud. You go around the room and score it on a score of 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. 
Uh, zero being, I would not read on. I would not yeah, respond. Yeah. Four being, I wouldn't change a single word. Uh, the reason that that was done was to remove language from it, from, okay. the, um, from the arena. Mm -hmm. Just a number. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. The next, I'm not saying this is perfect, by the way, I'm just after it. Yeah, but also, if it, if it was, if I just went to zero, 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 you wouldn't be even. Yeah, you stop the review there. You just yes. get back to the end of the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> everybody, everybody out. Yeah, I just wouldn't read on. You don't need to offer anymore. So there was numbers instead of words. Yeah. The next phase was around the what ifs. So every sentence had to begin with the word what if. What if you changed X to Y? And the way that would work was you would offer it. Ideally, it would be changed on the screen in front of you, and then you would then go around the room and say stronger or weaker, stronger or weaker, or stronger. Or indifferent. As yeah. Well, which is yeah. 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 And then. And then, then at the end, you would then break down into a slightly more. Um, yes. But there were there were strengths and weaknesses of that approach. <laughs> yes. Well, there were. I mean, it, it, it could degenerate into complete pointlessness. Yeah. where Everybody says two point five, and then. No, it was two point seven. Was always yeah. the. Uh, it always averaged two point seven, which was enough to kind of talk about it, but not right. really. Nobody would ever give a four or a zero or a one. That's what we found over time. <laughs> So it became pointless. It was like, is it a two or a three or something? Yeah. <laughs> but as a process, it was useful. The only caveat that we found over time was it did not work with inexperienced people. It only worked if you had a good group of experienced okay. writers or yeah. marketers who'd, who'd, who'd been around the industry long enough for their feedback to be valuable. Yeah. Otherwise, you've got this very anodyne. People actually go out their way to not take a risk in a review. Yeah, so they yeah. don't want to put their head above the parapet and say it's a zero. For instance, mm, yes. because that's a that's a real shot across the bat. Yeah. So it wasn't perfect, but the, uh, of all of those things, the what if and stronger and weaker element were the things that I've incorporated into yeah. the way that I would give the feedback because that's effectively what we do. Yeah. You know, what if you changed it, it to this? At least you have something to vote against. Yes. Yeah. I, I was. I was There's no to... question. Sorry. No, 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 no. question. It, it, uh, that's how conversations work. Uh, they come back and forth. And... I just thought it was <laughs> useful. No, because yeah. there, there are ways of structuring feedback that yeah. are useful, and then there are yes. ways that are a complete mess of course. and are horrible to be part of. And actually, you are, you know you can really scar people against seeking feedback. Mm. I'll, I'll tell you yeah. what I, I think would, would happen if we implemented the scoring system with the students early on. I think you would get an influx of fours. Really? Because four okay. would be their substitute for, I like it, it's nice, you're my friend, I don't want you to say. Or 3.5. So and then as they would start to get used to it, we'd end up with what you just said, you've been around with twos and threes. Because I think in the same way as a copywriter, you go into this thing and you feel like, I don't want to shoot for a four and end up with a zero, I'll play it safe. I think, you know, you're judged on your feedback in the same way that you're judged on your work. So sitting in a room, certainly by a student, you can very quickly go, I want to be the one to score it at four if everyone else gives this a zero or a one. I'll stick in two or three because that feels like safe territory. And it feels like I don't particularly have to defend my decision with that. Um, we talked about the what if thing earlier, and I feel like that is a really, really useful thing for our students where we're forcing you to make a contribution. We're forcing you to suggest something. You can't just comment on like it, don't like it, or in a vague sense, it's effective, it's not effective. You're having to say, if this was mine now, this would be the thing I'd do to make it better. Um, we, we were just talking about taking responsibility, mm -hmm. and, and it, it comes back to that here as well, that the idea of seeking uh, criticism, not yes. praise. Because I think what what we've found in, in the system, the peer review system, and what you guys are doing, um, it's it's speaking to the bigger thing in life, where yes. it's like, you've got baggage, you've got like yeah, empathy baggage, and you've got the luxury. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh. going to the pub tonight, and you're going, why the fuck did you give me like a one today? What were you doing? Yes. Yeah. So you've got all of this kind of thing. But if you take responsibility, if you seek the criticism, and it's a slow thing, because it's in life, it's in everything. Yeah. But if you can, if you realise, oh, actually, my coffee's not going to get any stronger unless yeah. I actually go and go, you need to tell me what's going yeah. on here. It is, you've got to kind of, or my advice to copyrights watching is, to, for as quick and as soon as you're able, start kind of going, no, no, I really need you to tell me how to. People will still not do it. People will still be like, yeah. remember that your audience will give you zero after zero yeah. after zero. Yeah. You are writing adverts, yeah. getting in the way of their life. But developing that and 
dis disassociate, it's not a personal attack, it's you're trying to get, I want to get this thing stronger. Yes. And it, but it's, I guess it does, it's boring, like, you've got to do it properly, but it's like, yeah, it is, yeah. you've got to take responsibility, you've got to go, okay, yeah. right, how do I do this? I, I always remember it was Joe Shreveford did a good thing, but you just said, you've got to watch people as well and watch for reactions. Yes. When you go, right, okay, I'm good. if you can get someone else to read your copy, out, just kind of watch that room. And yeah. when everybody goes, what's it's the like, line now? Like, yeah, yeah, or just like goes, yeah, 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 oh yeah. But it's that split second going, okay, cool. Because when you say your next line is, yeah, I like it, yeah. it's like, no, you don't. I saw in your eyes. But as a copywriter, I think that's a, a good tool to learn as well. Do, do you find that really you're, you can spot your, your, your really strong students in a review, not necessarily looking at their own work, but looking at the way they contribute to other people? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. That's my now, it's a, little, it's a little bit simplistic, and it's generally true, that those that give better feedback are better students. Um, those that have sussed out that you get out what you put in, which sounds very cliche, but it is generally true, isn't it? And I, I think it's it's not like an altruistic thing where I want to help my friends be, be better. No, they want to show off usually. <laughs> no, it's, sure not. it's also this, this kind of this instinctive creative reaction where you feel like you can make this idea better and you can't help but articulate that. You have to say, if this was me, I would do this thing with it. And you know, really, well, you told me about this as a student in the, the third year who was feeding back on a, another a student's work. She said, I'm going to role play this now, and I'm going to pretend I'm the, the marketing director. And no one, you yeah, know, I've never yeah. seen a student do that. I did have to ask and been able to say, do you know what, I, I'm going to adopt this other persona if I have to. If that's, you know, the way I can be brutally honest about this work and talk about it from a... But I, I wonder, actually, if there's a lesson there in, in, as you develop in your career, which is seek out other writers to provide feedback. Yeah. Right? Be a part of a group because when you're learning, you may actually find it easier to be creative about other people's work and have to take those risks yeah. and say, Why don't you do it like this? Taking the knowledge you don't have to do it. Yeah. But actually, it's very easy as a writer, if especially if people are in this sort of environment where they're surrounded by other people, to be on your own yeah. and never really, maybe you might get a bit of feedback on your own work, yeah. you're not really offering any feedback yes. on anybody else because you don't know anybody. Yeah. Seek out those people. Yeah. And, and say, well, let's swap work every week. You know, it might be somebody you've never met, you've only ever met them online. Yeah, yeah. You know, LinkedIn comments or whatever. You think, oh, should we start a little group? I think things like that are a great way of accelerating. Yeah, great. Your ability to give feedback is, is that. I'm, I'm developing a thought recently about your. <laughs> Just one thought. <laughs> Just a one solitary thought. thought. I've got a little petri dish at home and I put it in there and I've added some soy sauce and some mayonnaise to it. And I'm that was a really yeah. fuzzy thought. Yeah. So. Um, but I, the idea that your best idea might be in someone else. Yes. And yeah. that the, the reflection of that, like, you you can't have that idea yourself, yeah, yeah. Andrew, but if I show you a thing and you go, oh, God, this, this reminded me of this, and I go, shit, that's what I needed to complete my yeah. idea. Yeah. Kind of thing. It's like somebody else picks the, the, the bat and runs along with it and then you grab it back off yeah. and it's, oh no, that's yeah, it's still like my idea. Yeah, it will yeah. still be my fruition. I will still develop it in the Petri dip and still like maintain that. But I needed that little reflection. We are all reflections of each other and all yes. that kind of stuff. But that, for me, I think that's big. But it's all the same parcel of creating an area of people that you can trust, get on with. But I do like the, the when you spoke, you spoke about responsibility is you've got to do it. But that's also, I think, just to bring it back to you know, teaching it and, and, and doing it on a course, that's why a three-year degree course is so valuable. Yeah. Um, to work not only on, on creative subjects, but in particular writing and, and communication and advertising. Because if you're just doing, say, a, a, a one or two month course, or even, a, or even just a one year course, that, that trusting relationships that you have with your peers takes quite a long time to, to develop. And if you can get to a stage by the third year when um, students are willing to support each other, or they're willing to say, or they're, they're up to saying, can I just tell you my idea? Because we all know that when you're describing an idea to someone, there's something going on which is helping you. There's sort of this 
uh, this rapid sedimentation going on when you're when you're talking to someone through an idea uh, that idea. You say, "What I'm trying to do is this." Is, I don't want to hear you. I've just sussed it out just by talking it out, yeah, just, yeah. By, just by speaking out loud. But if you can if you can work with a, a good number of student colleagues, so students working with their peers, to feed back to each other. It's worth the tuition fees. Just that is so valuable. Well, I think we're at those skills. To try and summarise what we're saying, the answer to your own creative problem may well be to go and give feedback to other people yes, about their absolutely. own work. That's very counterintuitive and is completely opposite to the way people outside of this environment would approach things. But it can really, it, it can really accelerate things because you just don't know what will come out of your yes. reflection of somebody else's work. It's not about just getting your own work reviewed, it's being a contributor to that process. I'd like to congratulate Giles for uh, doing a good, nice bringing back to uh, a moment of course. A silver medal to Nick, who managed to say it will accelerate your career, uh, bring you back to fix, accelerate, and use a good well, thing. Well, get the books on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> <Not that much. laughs> yeah, I just, I'd love to see it. I love yes. when it becomes the Graham Norton show, I feel like it's. That's one we'll have achieved. I'm not talking about feedback. Honest it feedback. Honest oh, feedback. Right, shall we wrap things up? No, now? I'm just going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is episode, the end. episode five we've recorded today, and I think it's time we all yeah. have um, to eat. Yeah, we've, super. we've got to work with the students, uh, so, yeah. and you're going to be knackered from going over a hill. Yep. You might make it down the hill. Yeah, I'm holding down. I'm going to need to find your Kate Bush on as well to play while you're running up the hill. <laughs> I'm trying to wrap up once. Is it still on film? That is still on film. I'm actually now thinking that there's another going to be a special episode of you just running up the hill with the Kate Bush music. We're probably not allowed that on YouTube, but I will record it privately and share it. Cool. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for this episode, but if you'd like to get your copy reviewed, or you've seen some copy you want Nick and Glenn's opinion on, get in touch at feedback at thefixcopywriting.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and share.